Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's 12 o'clock, Wednesday, July the 13th. Welcome to you. This is our midweek, midday Bible study. I'm glad to have you today. We'll be on lesson 11 of our study on the parables of Jesus. I see you. Welcome, Zachary McGee and Shirley Robinson, Errol Harper. Bless you, Brother Errol, you and Deborah. Brenda Derricott is with us. Bless you, Sister Derricott. Appreciate all of you that are coming in the room today. Pat Yancey is with us. Good to see you all today. Again, Lesson 11 today. Uh, hope you have your Bibles. We'll be coming out of the 15th chapter of Matthew for the most part. LaShawn Porter is with us. Uh, good to see that name today. Sister McCoy, welcome to you. And all of you who are coming in the room, there are some of you who do not turn on notifications, who connect with us. I'm glad to have you, whoever you are, whether you're part of Providence or one of our supporters or friends. Darlene Pinson is with us. Bless you. Faye Davis is with us. Good to see you all coming in the room today. Welcome to all of you. Again, Lesson 11 on the Parables of Jesus Christ. Lesson 11 today. Stanley Hunter is with us. Welcome to you, Brother Stanley Hunter. I appreciate your presence with us today. Bless you. Charlene Cater is in the room. Yeah, good to see y'all connecting. I appreciate it. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for another day. Thank you for blessings and grace. Thank you for the privilege of prayer that we have and for the opportunity to study together, God. We pray that you would make your word come alive, both in our understanding and in its application. Uh, we pray, God, that what we hear and what we read and what we sense spiritually today would bless and benefit us as we seek uh, to be used as instruments to advance your kingdom. It's our prayer, God, that your will be done in all of us as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Others have come in the room. Uh, Brother Alvin Holt is with us. Welcome, Brother Holt. We appreciate all of y'all who are connected today. We are on Lesson 11 of the Parables of Jesus. And there are two very short parables that Jesus utters in Matthew chapter 15. Hope you have your Bibles. Go to Matthew chapter 15. Glenda Jackson, welcome to you, Glenda. Good to see your name uh, today. All right. In Matthew 15, there are two short parables that Jesus tells. The first parable Jesus told immediately after his disciples were being criticized by the Pharisees. Uh, go to Matthew 15, look at verse 1. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Welcome, Sister Cynthia Redding. Y'all see that? That's Matthew 15, verses 1 and 2. Pharisees, teachers of the law, come to Jesus, criticizing his disciples because they said, your disciples don't wash their hands before they eat. And notice how they reference it in verse 2. Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? How did they break the tradition in the eyes of the Pharisees? The disciples, Jesus' disciples, they said, did not wash their hands before they ate. Welcome, Carol and Freeman. So the very first parable Jesus told is based on the criticism of his disciples by the Pharisees. Jesus' first response, though, was to address the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. Look at verse 3 of Matthew 15. Let me make sure I got it. Verse 3 of Matthew 15. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition. Y'all see that? That explains what's, what's about to happen here, what Jesus is doing. Jesus is saying, y'all are complaining about my disciples breaking tradition by not eating, the, eating 
by not washing their hands before they eat. He says, but y'all are breaking not the tradition, but the command of God for the sake of your tradition. For God said, verse 4, honor your father and mother and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Welcome, Hazel Slayton. God bless you. Y'all see that? So, in verses 1 and 2, the Pharisees criticized Jesus' disciples for not washing their hands before they eat, saying that they're breaking the tradition of the elders. Jesus said, well, y'all break the command of God for the sake of the tradition that y'all are talking about. So Jesus addresses the hypocrisy of the Pharisees who were more guilty of wrong than Jesus' own disciples. And we'll see, you know, we'll see something about that as we continue reading in uh, Matthew 15. So we read 3 through 9. Now look at Jesus' response to the crowd. First he speaks to the Pharisees. Then look at verse 10 of Matthew 15. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, what did he say? Listen and understand. Verse 11, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Y'all see Jesus, Teen Durham, bless you. Good to see you. Sister Doris Neal and Sister Sherrod, bless you. Good to see you. Y'all see that? So Jesus says, this is the point I'm trying to make. Jesus, Jesus says, this is the point I'm trying to make. It's not what goes into your mouth that makes you unclean. It's what comes out of your mouth that makes you unclean. That's Jesus' response in verses 10 and 11 of Matthew 15. All right, so we got a little understanding there. And then Jesus tells a second parable in verse 13 of Matthew 15. But before we get to that, look at verse 12. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? <laughs> so they didn't like what Jesus said because Jesus, Jesus contradicted uh, their opinion. Look at verse number 13. Verse 12 says, The disciples came to Jesus and said, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? Jesus replied, Every plant. Here's his second parable in verse 13. Every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Y'all see that? Okay. So, Pharisees complain. Jesus addresses their hypocrisy in verses 3 through 9 of Matthew 15. He gives his first parable to the crowd in verse 11. The disciples asked Jesus in verse 12 if he knew that he had offended the Pharisees. And of course he knew. And then Jesus tells a second parable. Now, let's back up a little bit. Let's back up a little bit because here's the basis for these parables, beginning with verse 1 of Matthew 15. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. What's the criticism? What's the complaint? Your disciples are breaking with a tradition. And that tradition is the washing of hands before one eats. Let's talk for a little bit about the fact that they refer to the tradition of the elders. Y'all get y'all keep that phrase in mind, the tradition tradition of the elders. Now, that tradition was not a law of Moses, but rather an oral tradition that had been passed down from generation to generation up to the time of Jesus. Y'all see that? Welcome Sharonita. See, I see you. Bless you. Y'all see that? It wasn't it, it was not 
in the Old Testament word, it was a tradition that had been created by Jewish leadership. And therefore, it was an oral tradition, one that was spoken from generation to generation, was passed down from generation to generation. As far as the Pharisee, Pharisees were, were concerned, the tradition was the way they were talking about it, a law. Come on. Think with me now. Go back to verse 1, Matthew 15. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break? What are they breaking? Are they breaking the law? No. They are breaking the tradition, the oral tradition of the elders. They don't wash their hands before they eat. So the Pharisees are referring to a tradition as if it is the law, as if they are committing a sin by not washing their hands before they ate. Not the law of God, not the command of God, not given to Israel by Moses because of God, but rather a tradition created by Jewish leadership. I see you, Sister Christine Washington Miller. Y'all see what I'm saying? So Jesus said, y'all tripping because y'all are making a tradition, a law. You're making something that you created by your own mind, something that God has said when it's only something that you have said. You have made that a tradition that is being broken by my disciples. So the, what are they referring to? A tradition. Back to verse 2. Why do your disciples, and listen, because the words, you got to understand, the words that they're using here indicates how important this is to the Pharisees. Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? Why are they doing that, Jesus? These are your followers. These are your people. Y'all all, all Jewish. Y'all know what we do before we eat. The problem is they ain't washing their hands before they eat. So the Pharisees were serious about this not washing of hands before eating. Everyone, every Jew, knew the tradition, practiced the tradition. So they knew it and they practiced it. But what's, <laughs> listen, Jesus replied, why do you break the command of God? Verse 3, look at it now, look at it. Why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? Jesus said, your problem is y'all are doing stuff in your hypocrisy. Y'all are finding a way to dishonor your fathers and your mothers by withholding from them what you should be giving them, but you're keeping it from them by saying that you're giving it to God. Y'all are breaking the command of God to honor your father and mothers in order to uphold a tradition that y'all made up. So what's Jesus' point? Jesus is saying, I hear what y'all are saying, but what y'all are complaining about is only a tradition. And it is a tradition that y'all devised or came up with that you are allowing to get in the way of what God really wants from his people. Sometimes tradition can be an impediment to what God really wants. We have to be careful about that. And that's not saying all traditions are bad. No, that's not what I'm saying. Jesus is saying, do not allow any tradition that you have devised to get in the way of the pure word of God. I want you to read, look at verse 3 again and see what I'm saying. He says, why do you... Now, we got two things being broken here according to the text. One is the oral tradition. The other is the command of God. So which is more important? Is it something, some tradition that somebody spoke to you that was older than you and passed it on to you? Or is it the word of God itself? Jesus' point is y'all are breaking, not a tradition. Y'all are breaking the command of God for the sake of a tradition that y'all merely came up with in order to avoid doing the right thing. Y'all see that? So Jesus said, y'all have taken this tradition of washing hands and made it an obstruction uh, to what God really wants when it comes to what's unclean. In the same way, Jesus says, y'all have taken an, a tradition of, of offering to God in order to keep from giving anything to your parents. 
So the tradition that you have devised of offering to God is now breaking the command of God, which is to honor your father and your mother. Let me put it another way. It's like you got something that you should bless your mother or your father with, but you got issues with your mother and your father. And you don't want to do anything from them. So in order to make it look good, the fact that you ain't doing anything for them, you say, well, I'm going to give this to God because I love God. And I want God to know I love him. And I want others to know that I love God. And so you give it to God when God has said in his word what that you should honor your parents, your father and your mother. That's what Jesus was talking about. Y'all have come up with a tradition of honoring parent, of honoring God and overlooking your parents. So you are defying God's command and putting a tradition in the way of it and act like you're doing the right thing. Y'all see that? All right. So let's go back to the text, Matthew 15. The first parable is in verse 11. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth that is what defiles them. That's the first parable that Jesus tells. And he taught, and he tells that parable about going in the mouth and coming out of the mouth because they were talking about wa uh, eating without washing uh, their hands. Allison Evans, welcome to you today. Y'all see me. So why is this first parable important? It's important because Jesus wants to address the danger of tradition, the danger of tradition. What's the complaint? Your disciples, Jesus, are breaking the tradition of the elders. Jesus said, well, y'all, y'all are putting oral tradition in the way of the command of God. So my disciples may be breaking your tradition, but y'all are breaking God's command. And that's far worse. The danger of, again, let me, let me reiterate, not all traditions are bad. There are some, there are some great traditions that that we hold to because um because of the legacy of those particular things it's like you know i still like singing a hymn on sunday for me that's a great tradition and it's not a bad tradition in any way because the hymns that we sing represent the gospel of god uh, the gospel of jesus christ and so the words to those hymns the lyrics to those hymns mean something to me they are hymns that i sang growing up so there are there are traditions that are great traditions but traditions can be dangerous uh, sometimes tradition means something that we've always done sometimes tradition means something that's out of date you know it just it just depends we look at it on a case-by-case -case basis not all traditions are bad not all are good Again, tradition connotes uh, something that's been done the same way a long time or perhaps something that is out of date. So tradition can be negative or it can be positive. The scriptures do not tell us that traditions are bad. It just says that in this particular case, we had a group of individuals who were using a tradition to get in the way of what God required them um, to do. So in this case additionally we must not assume one of the points that comes from these two parables is we must not assume that all traditions are good just because it's always been done that way not everything that is handed down to us is is the pure word of god y'all see what i'm saying some traditions get in the way of the pure word of word of God so we are called to talk about and to think about and to look at the danger of some traditions now there's another thing I want you to see here and that's the difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge after Jesus talked about the hypocrisy of the Pharisees we're in Matthew 15 go to verse 7 Jesus says you hypocrites he says y'all are hypocrites because y'all are putting tradition in the way of the word of God. He says, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, 
What did Isaiah say? These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. And then Jesus said, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. The first parable talks about the difference coming out of the mouth, going in the mouth, between head knowledge and heart knowledge. Verse number eight, these people honor me with their lips, right? But their hearts are far from me. Their lips, their hearts. Jesus is describing the Pharisees who were currently criticizing his disciples. Head knowledge, listen to this point. Head knowledge is knowing doctrine and understanding it. Heart knowledge is seeking after or a hunger from God. Go back. Look at verse 8, Matthew 15. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So then head knowledge is doctrine. Heart knowledge is a hunger for God. Get this point. None of us can truly understand the word of God when that word is interfered with by people and their tradition. Margaret Williams is with us. Belinda Woods, bless you, good to see you. Y'all see what I'm saying? Jesus is making a point here. He says, they honor me with their lips. Their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. We make up stuff, make traditions out of stuff that gets in the way of understanding the true and pure word of God. Head knowledge, doctrine, heart knowledge is a hunger for God and we can only understand God's word when it is not interfered with by the opinions of men and women. So Jesus, how does Jesus then um, encapsulate verses 8 and 9 of Matthew 15? In verse 11 he does that. He says, listen, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Jesus is talking about the doctrine of man and sin and saying there's a difference between the breaking of tradition and the breaking of the law. See, some folk got the head knowledge, which is doctrine. Welcome to you, uh, Barbara Davis. Some folk got the head knowledge, <laughs> but, but they don't have the heart knowledge. They got the doctrine down but they don't have a hunger for God. Jesus says the conviction of sin is not about the breaking of, of rules. It's about your heart toward God, how your heart responds to God, how your heart is in relationship to God. The basis of sin is not you eating with dirty hands, Jesus says. The basis of sin is the stuff that comes out of your foul mouth. Y'all see that? Not about rules. It's about the heart of an individual. Many people are good at observing rules, but are not good at looking within, them, within themselves and identifying the troubles they have and the problems they have in their own hearts. And that's why Jesus talked about the blind leading the blind in that second parable beginning in verse 13. Y'all see that? All right. So Jesus is making a point here. Go back to uh, verse 11. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. And then if you back up to verse 8, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts. They honor me with their lips. They say stuff but their hearts are far from me. Jesus is also saying that the tongue reveals a person's heart. The tongue reveals a person's heart. Uh, listen to Matthew 12, verses 34 through 37. Make note of that, Matthew 12, 34 through 37. Sandra Munford, welcome to you. Uh, Jesus says, you brood of vipers. How can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. 
A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. That's Matthew 12, 34 through 37. The tongue reveals a person's heart. And those few verses in Matthew 12, in those verses, Jesus says to us, we are accountable for our words. Why? Not just because they have been spoken, but because those words reflect the heart that produced those words. Bless you, Sister Fambro. Y'all see what I'm saying? All right. So we are accountable for our words and God allows the tongue to reveal our hearts. And if the tongue reveals the hearts, if the tongue reveals the heart, then that means words are important and words are powerful. And when folks, you know, when folks say stuff and then apologize for it, they really meant what they said. You know, and perhaps in the apology, there is some repentance, but not always. Sometimes it's just an apology because that's the right thing to do, but not because the person repents of what they said. Words reflect the heart, which is why we have to be careful about what we say. You know, words, words are very revealing about us. So what's the first parable? The first parable, verse 11, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. That's the first parable. And Jesus responding to the fact that people can make traditions more important than the command of God. And they reveal that by the things they say. Because the words are a reflection of what's in the heart. The second parable, verse number 13. Jesus says, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. Leave who? Leave the Pharisees. Leave them alone. He says they're blind guides. They are blind guides. If the blind leave the blind, both will fall into a pit. All right? That's the second parable that Jesus tells in response to this back and forth uh, with the Pharisees in Matthew 15. What's Jesus' point? Let, let, let's see what Jesus' point is by looking at a key word. Look at 13. He replied, every plant, that word plant is important, that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Okay? So, in the second parable, Jesus says, not everything that exists was put there by God. You see that? Pharisees have been criticizing Jesus' disciples for not washing their hands. Welcome to you, Lily Dixon. Look at verse 13. Jesus replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Jesus' point, God didn't plant this, so I don't want y'all disciples tripping over this. God did not plant this mess that we're having to deal with today. Not everything that exists was put there by God. You ever wondered how somebody ended up where they ended up, you'd be like, man, that just, I don't see no rhyme or reason in this. Well, that's because we run into a lot of stuff every day that is not, that's not God's doing. We hear somewhere, Dolores Gordon, welcome to you. We hear some stuff that ain't God talking. Not everything that exists was put there by God. Y'all see that? Luke 16, verse 15, Jesus said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others, but God knows your hearts. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight. There are some things that God does not esteem. Make a note of that. that just, I just read to you Luke 16, verse 15. Look at Psalm 127 and verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, the, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Not everything that exists is of God. And if it ain't, 
then it can't stand. It'll be around for a little while, but it cannot stand. All right? All right, let's go back to our text. Luke, look, look at Matthew 15, verse 8 again. These people honor me with their lips, lips, but their hearts are far from me. The priority here is the heart. The priority here is the heart. What's in a person. Because what's in a person is reflected by what comes out of that person's heart. The theme of the first parable is the priority of the heart. Verse 11, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, or what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Webster Langhorne, welcome, welcome. That, that's Jesus saying it's what's in the person's heart that matters. Because that's the root of what comes out of a person's heart mouth. Now, for the Pharisees, the washing of hands before one ate was ceremonial. For us, it's practical. We wash our hands because we don't want to be, we don't want to be uh, bringing anything to our dining pleasure on our hands that would make our food unhealthy for us. So we wash our hands before we eat. But now, for the Pharisees, it was ceremonial. Make a note of Mark 7 and verse 3. Mark 7, verse 3. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing. For the, so for them, it's not practical. It's ceremonial. And what does it say at the end of verse 3 of Mark 7? That they are holding to the tradition of of the elders. So when they washed their hands, it wasn't about having, I'm talking about the Pharisees, when they washed their hands before they ate, it was not for the purpose of having clean hands so that they wouldn't transfer dirt to their food. It was a matter of ceremony with them and it was a ceremony that did not come from the word of God. It was the tradition of the elders. So that means that when they complained about Jesus' disciples not washing their hands before they, before they ate, it was really their superstition. They were like, oh, you can't, wash your, you can't eat without washing your hands. That's superstition. For us, it's practical. For the Pharisees, it's a superstitious matter because for them, it's a ceremony that must take place before they eat. So Jesus said, y'all, what y'all are saying is that my disciples are unclean because they don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus is saying, though, let me define what is unclean. It's not the food that you have put in your mouth with unclean hands. It's the words that come out of your mouth representing an unclean heart. Y'all see that? Now look at verse 12 of Matthew 15. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? <laughs> Jesus, do you know that you upset the Pharisees when you said this? And Jesus said, yeah, well, I understand. He said, but they got this thing wrong. It's not what goes into a mouth that makes you unclean. It's what comes out of your mouth that makes you unclean. Job 40, the book of Job, chapter 40, verse number 4. Uh, Job is going through his tough time, his reprimand from God. Verse 4 of Job 40, Job says, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you, God? I put my hand over my mouth. So Job says, the way I need to respond to God who has come and corrected me is to just keep my mouth shut and listen to what God has to say. Because I've said some stuff that's not good. And that's why I'm having to deal with God the way I'm having to deal with him right now. That's Job talking. I put my hand over my mouth. There ain't nothing I can say to what you said, God. Because the stuff I previously said was incorrect. So let me be quiet and listen, God, to what you have to say. Who I am affects my words. Who I am affects 
my words. Let's take a look at another passage. Um, Psalm 19 and verse 14. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What, what comes out of the mouth is what is unclean based on the condition of the heart. Listen to James 3 and verse 10. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursings. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. That's James in chapter 3 and verse number 10. So, go to now verse, what are we going to look at? Verse number 17 of Matthew 15. Because in verse 15 of Matthew 15, Peter said to Jesus, please explain the parable to us. So Jesus just told two parables, right? Uh, Sister Grace, welcome to you. Uh, Jesus does, just tells two parables and Peter asks for an explanation in verse 15. Look at verse 16 of Matthew 15. Are you still so dull, Jesus asked them? Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? That's the, that's the human process, right? Then verse 18, Jesus says, But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. So Jesus explained the two parables after Peter asked for an explanation. He contrasts, see the Pharisees were thinking naturally. Jesus is here thinking spiritually. It's not the dirty hands that makes the unclean person, but rather the dirty heart that leads to dirty words that come out of the mouth of the unclean person. Jesus separates the natural from the spiritual. Y'all see that? And he contrasts the stomach and the heart. You eat something, it goes into the stomach, the stomach processes it, and the body ejects what is waste. That's the process for what goes in the mouth. But Jesus says there's another process, and that process ends with things coming out of your mouth. And that's the most important process because that's a reflection of your spiritual condition. Eating with unwashed hands is not, uh, is not an example of what makes a person unclean just because you didn't wash your hands. Elish Rayford is with us. Welcome, Elish. So Jesus says it's not dirty hands eating food that makes a person unclean. It's what's in a person's heart that leads to what they say that makes them unclean. So we got to separate the natural from the spiritual. Why is the heart so important? Verse 8, Matthew 15. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. The heart is important because the heart is the seat of a person's affections. You know, at the heart of the galaxy is the sun. And all these planets revolve around the sun. So then the sun is the heart of the solar system. The sun is the heart of the solar system. And everything revolves around it. And every one of the planets that revolve around the sun get their condition from the sun. What is at the center is what determines everything else on the outside. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So Jesus says... What is at the center of your being, the core of your being, your heart, the seat of your affections, is what leads to what you say with your mouth. Matthew 7, verse 11. I'm going to read a, a few scriptures that talk about, you know, the condition of the heart until God makes the difference. Verse 11 of Matthew 7. If you then, though you are evil, 
know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? God, Jesus says, your condition requires the Lord in your life. You ain't, you ain't as good as you think you are. Irma Wilkins is with us. Welcome, welcome to you, Sister Williams. Listen to um, Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? That's what scripture says about the heart. Y'all see that? Look at Romans 3, beginning with verse 10. Paul says, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. And read that all the way down to verse 18 of Romans 3. Scripture says we got heart conditions that need to be addressed by a relationship with the Lord. Listen to Psalm 58 and verse 3. Even from birth, the wicked go astray. From birth, the wicked go astray. From the womb, they are wayward, spreading lies. Yeah, when I was, when I was really young, lying was extremely easy. When I was a little kid, lying was extremely... That's the condition of the heart that requires that the Lord be the one that addresses us. Even with the best of us, what we've just seen in Romans 3, beginning with verse 10, even with the best of us, the heart requires a changing, a transformation by the renewing of the mind. Y'all see that? Psalm 141. Well, no, let's back up. Look at James 3 and verse 6. Make note of that. James 3, verse 6. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. That's James chapter 3, verse 6. The psalmist, Psalm 141, verse 3. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Y'all see that? So, yeah. When we come out the womb, we just little liars needing to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. That's just, that's just the way it is. Whatever I am, whatever I am is because of the Lord. If there's any, if there's any, anything I've done that's godly, it's because of God himself. Yeah, it's, 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 Living well is a matter of just turning your life over to the Lord and just ha letting the Lord have his way and letting him establish a guard over your heart so that what you speak is a reflection of what he's doing in your heart and with your heart. So a lot of times when we do what we should not do, it's a matter of saying what we should not say <laughs> because it's, it's, welcome Alexandra, it's a matter of the mouth being a reflection of the heart. Y'all see that? So repentance is a change of the mind and of the heart. All right, look at uh, Matthew 15, look at verses 13 and 14. He replied, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. The plant that Jesus is talking about is the Pharisees. He's saying, don't, don't even be tripping about them. God did not plant this what they're saying is not of God you are not unclean because you eat food with unwashed hands you are unclean because your mouth says things that come from an unclean heart so Jesus says don't worry about what they say about y'all they are going by one definition of unclean Jesus says I'm going by God's definition of unclean. 
So there are two truths in what Jesus said. Go back to 13 and 14. Matthew 15. Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind gods. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall. Two truths, Jesus says. Number one, leave them alone. It's okay. Don't trip over what they say. And that's a, that's a powerful lesson for all of us who have come under the um, cloud of criticism. You know, if you're walking in faith with God and things are said about you uh, that are untrue or meant to hurt you or harm you, um, the Lord says in this text, let, let them be. Let them be. I was listening to someone say yesterday uh, that his grandmother taught him, you know, you ain't got to respond. Welcome to you, Sharon Chapman and Wendy Glenn. Um, he was saying, you ain't got to respond to everything that people say about you. And listen, we live in an age now where people think Anytime something is said, you got to say, no, you don't have to say something every time something's said about you, especially when you know that, you know, that God is in this situation and God's got control of the situation. Man, people, people take the least little stuff. I mean, people are getting shot over some stupid stuff these days because people are just reacting, overreacting to the smallest stuff. Jesus said, I heard what they said about y'all, but leave them alone. Disciples talking about Jesus, do you know you offended them? Jesus said, man, leave them dudes alone. Don't even worry about what them dudes are saying. You good? You okay? That was the first thing, first truth. He said, let them be. And then the second truth was, ain't nothing that they trying to do going to amount to anything. <laughs> That's the second thing. So if God's in control, if, if, if what people try is going to amount to nothing you know if God's in control of the situation if he's working all things together for your good even if you got to be crucified on Friday he's going to raise you up you ain't got to trip over it what they say it's not important that's just unclean words coming from an unclean heart let your words you know, be like David in Psalm 51. Create within me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me, God. You ain't got to be tripping over stuff. Let your words be different. You don't have to speak like people speak. You don't have to go tit for tat. Mm -mm, it ain't necessary. Now, you got to mature to get to that point. Because, you know, all of us, when we young, we be ready to cuss folk out, you know. Not be ready to. We be cussing them out. But you don't have to. You know, there's a better way to respond. If something is going to come to nothing eventually, then ain't nothing you got to say because God is already in control of that situation. Y'all see what I'm saying? Okay. All right, that's it for us today. I hope that that will um, bless you and keep you. Appreciate everybody that's connected today. We normally run maybe around 100 people or so. Wednesdays at noon uh, would be not, and there are a lot of people that work too that probably would be with us but uh, for those that are not busy Wednesdays at noon I hope they start connecting with us okay all right um, what do I need to say to y'all will be we got um, truth to power tomorrow night at 6 p.m. on Facebook live with Tyler Joshua Green Bible study next week Wednesday and what are we, we'll be talking about the two debtors, the two debtors. Uh, let me see where that is. Let y'all know where that is so y'all know where to go and read it. Uh, the two debtors. And verse, that will be lesson number 12. Yeah, the two debtors. Look, look at, uh, read Luke 7. Read the seventh chapter. Of Luke's gospel. Read Luke 7 for next week's Bible study, okay? Noon. You know what though? There's gonna be there's gonna be a special. We resume this study Wednesday after next next Wednesday. There's a special presentation I want y'all to see. Now come 
at noon of next week and then the following week we'll resume okay all right truth to power tomorrow night food bank saturday 10 to 12 worship sunday at 9 a.m in person and virtual hope to see you nurseries open sundays now for children up to eight years old scholarship day is sunday august 7th and back to school rally whole lot of different uh, activities for adults and young people that'll be saturday august the 6th we're praying for ralph and juanita culpepper and family charlie and rosine hayes donna moore the family of cornelia horton Paula C., Kimberly Freeman, Emma Stubbs, Latanya Cook, Belinda Woods, Arlene Clark is recovering. I talked to Arlene today. Uh, Pat Clark, uh, Alan Rutledge, Margaret Motley, Rufus Jordan, Paul and Cal Robinson, Sarah Clay, Hardy Marshall, Esther and Mia Porter, uh, Clarence Bowling and Robin Stevenson, Luella Kane, many more. The family of Eugene Harper, his sister, Margaret Beasley passed, Khadija Harris and Inetta Johnson, okay? Thank you for connecting today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word in the presence of your spirit. Thank you, God, for reminding us of the true essence of uncleanness coming from our hearts and leading to our words. We lift up all that we have read today and all that we've heard today, God, and pray that you would help us make application of it. We lift up as well every name we've called, every family, God, we pray for those especially who are sick, those who are grieving, and those who are shut in. Now, God, we pray for providence and the work you've called us to do in this community. We pray for all of those who are connected with us virtually today, God, and pray that uh, every soul uh, will realize uh, your blessings and your grace and how wondrous and bountiful they are in all of our lives. God, go with us the remainder of the day. Thank you for the privilege of studying together. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you. I appreciate you all. Look forward to um, Wednesday after next, and next Wednesday a special presentation at noon on Facebook Live. Have a great rest of the day.